So this is the public sector accounting and finance book, and uh, all our discussion will primarily be coming from this book, uh, generally at the end of the day. So I'm going to be making references to it. There are questions in it that we are going to be solving because as part of the book, we included a lot of questions and answers on the various topics, various segments of the syllabus to ensure that you pass the examination. I believe uh, some of you already have it. If you don't have it, you can get it. If you have any other public sector book also, that's fine. It's not something that you are under, uh, you know, command to have it necessarily, but all my teaching will be coming in from directly the book in that particular case. So public sector accounting and finance, what I want to do quickly is to share with you the structure of the examination. And in the next 12 weeks, that is how we are going to be studying public sector accounting and finance. And that is what you must understand on how to pass the public sector accounting and finance examination. So let's go quickly. Question one. What do we have in question one? Basically, question one is going to be issues relating to general purpose financial statements. So general purpose financial reporting framework. Okay, so that is question one. It's going to be on general purpose financial reporting framework. But what is general purpose financial reporting framework? That is a bigger uh, topic there. But under it, there are, among other things, four key issues that we need to pay attention to four or five issues. The first thing there is going to be the issue in relation to measurement basis. Now, there are a couple of measurement bases, and we'll get into this later on, but we're going to have issues in relation to historical cost, fair value. These are all various measurement bases. Present value, replacement cost, okay? All these are measurement basis and the examiner can bring you a question and ask you uh based on this transaction or based on this item what will be the appropriate measurement basis that the entity is supposed to use then you will suggest or oh, they should use historical cost based on a b c and d they should use fair value based on a b c and d they should use replacement cost based on a b c or d or what well we'll get into all that don't worry that's the first thing measurement basis not only that the second thing that we're going to be having here is also going to be on accounting basis. If you have some accounting background, which you are expected to have if you are here, but if you don't also, no problem. But accounting basis is a second category of the discussion generally at the end of the day. Now, accounting basis, this is where we are talking about issues such as cash basis of accounting. That is how we recognize transactions in the financial statements. Accounting bases are what the entity uses in recognizing financial or transactions in the books of account. So we have the cash basis of accounting. We'll get into this later on. We have the accrual basis of accounting. We have the modified cash basis. Okay. Modified cash basis and then modified accrual basis. These are the four basis of accounting or accounting basis that can be used and we'll get into all of these so again the examiner can decide to bring you a question relating to the accounting basis and will ask you okay based on these transactions that we have available a b c or d which accounting basis will be appropriate or how would the transaction be accounted for under cash basis of accounting under accrual basis of accounting and there you would have to decide which one will be appropriate and explain it to the examiner as well in that particular case. And that is something that you need to understand as well when it comes to dealing with that. Number three. The third thing that we need to understand here is accounting techniques. Accounting techniques. Now, like I said, what I'm doing here is to help you to understand the scope of the syllabus, number one, but also to help you to prepare a steady plan yourself that you can be you, you can use to study ahead of the main class. That is very important because you need to have your own study plan that you can use to study ahead of the main class and understand very well what is going on. So accounting techniques or approaches. Now, there are a couple of accounting techniques of or approaches that we can talk about. We have what we call vote accounting, okay? We have fund accounting, all right? We have commitment accounting, okay? Commitment accounting. 
environmental accounting, all right, and a couple of other ones. They are the way financial statements are generally pre prepared by entities. And we'll get into that also later on. So again, these are all question one. Either one of these things will be there or two will be there. But you have to understand, 20 mark in question one, that is what the examiner is going to be throwing at you there. Then number four is going to be qualitative characteristics of financial statement. Qualitative characteristics of financial statements. Remember, one of the one of our responsibilities at the end of the day and to show government's accountability is to prepare consul, uh, prepare financial statements. But in order for the financial statement to be useful, it must have some attributes or some qualities. The attribute or qualities that a set of financial statements is supposed to have is what we refer to as qualitative characteristics of financial statement. And we have what we refer to as faithful representation. Okay, so we have faithful representation. We have what we refer to as relevance. We have timeliness, you know, and a lot of things. Understandability. There are six of them and we'll get into this later on and these are qualitative characteristics of financial statement the examiner control that are you as well in that particular case then the fifth thing that we must understand still in question one will be some ipsas issue that is international public sector accounting standards and we'll get into that also later on so 20 marks in question one the question is going to be coming from these things two of them will be in the exam hall that has been the examiner's strategy all of it all of them have been asked by the examiner then we go to question two question two will require us to do some work a little bit and question two is 20 marks and it's about financial statement preparation that's another 20 marks done deal waiting for you in the exam hall now when it comes to financial statement preparation it is either we are going to be preparing financial statement for the central government. When we say for the central government, it means we are preparing the financial statement on the consolidated fund, which is the central account of Ghana. We'll get into that in a moment, don't worry. Or we are preparing financial statement for ministries, department or agencies, metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies. Or we are preparing financial statement for other covered entities for other covered entities. In public sector, when we say a covered entity, a covered entity is simply an entity whose activities are financed either in part or in whole by the government or from the consolidated fund. Okay, so CE, covered entities, a covered entity is an entity whose activities are financed either in part or whole by the government. Sounds good? By the government or if you want through the consolidated fund or through the consolidated fund so that is what a covered entity is that is what a covered entity so public schools public hospitals public companies all are referred to as what covered entities so one of them will be there either we are preparing for the consolidated fund which is the central government or we are preparing for a ministry maybe ministry of health ministry of education ministry of uh whatever finance or a metropolitan accra metropolitan assembly or a municipal or a district assembly or any other covered entities one of them will be there for 20 marks it's done deal you must know about it but to ensure that you excel in the preparation of financial statement that is a finished product there are a couple of things that you have to do to ensure that you reach that level and so some key topics that are going to be crucial for you to excel in the question two aspect of the exam will include the following. One is going to be revenue management and expenditure control. This is a key topic in public sector. You need to understand it to be able to excel in the question two and also in question three. I will explain this to you in a moment, but the examiner can also bring a dedicated question on its own in relation to this particular one so you have to be mindful of this we'll cover this don't worry but you have to be mindful of it in that particular case then the second thing that we need to understand basically will be the issue in relation to what i said earlier the ipsas international public sector accounting standards you know if we leave governments to prepare its own financial statement without adhering to certain laws, it's going to be just a waste of time in that particular case. So there are IPSAS, these are the standards that are used by public sector organizations to prepare financial statements. 
So the key, there are a lot of them. For those of once you have enrolled in the course, you will see the, the whole course available on the portal, which means you can actually study ahead of me and uh, go away in that particular case, right? So everything is actually available for you on the portal to be able to pass the exams. That's one beauty also of you know having access to these videos. The first one is going to be IPSAS 17. That is property, plant, and equipment. Now, this is the same as IAS 16. So for those of you doing financial reporting, it's the same as IAS 16, property, plant, and equipment. It's the same thing, just some modification to contextualize in the public sector, but that is there. Two, IPSAS 12, that is inventory. It's the same thing also here as IPS, IAS 2, inventory in financial reporting. Number three, we're going to have IPSAS 3, which is accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates. That is the same as IAS 8 in financial reporting. Then we go to IPSAS 9, that is revenue from non-exchange transactions, revenue from non-exchange transactions. Then you go to the IPSAS 23, and that is revenue from exchange transaction. And we're going to get into all of these IPSAS later on in our discussion in that particular case. Then we have IPSAS 5. We have IPSAS, you know, there are a lot of IPSAS available in order for you to understand uh, how you can deal with this generally at the end of the day in that particular case. But these are the key issues that you need to understand. The third question is going to be on two things. Public expenditure and financial accountability framework that is PIFA and evaluation of financial statement. So it's going to be splitted into two. The A aspect of the question may be on the evaluation or it depends. Okay. It depends. Under the evaluation of financial statement, there are three issues that you need to understand. We have what we call the common size analysis. And we'll get into this later on. Don't worry. Number two, we have what we refer to as ratio analysis. We're going to be calculating the ratios and interpret the ratios based on what we have available as an entity generally. And then number three, we're going to have budget variance analysis. Remember what I told you about the revenue management and expenditure control, this very topic here. I told you that it's going to be applicable here. So when it comes to evaluation of financial statement, that topic, revenue management and expenditure control, is going to be crucial because it's going to play a key role in ensuring that we actually analyze this. Please note, here again, everything has been asked by the examiner before. Common size has come several times. Ratio analysis, numerous times. Budget variance analysis, numerous times. Then suddenly, the B aspect is going to be what I mentioned on PIFA. It's a huge aspect. Of the syllabus, we are promised of at least 10 marks on that, which means technically the analysis will also be 10 marks so that the question three takes the 20 marks area as well for our examination. Depending on how excited the examiner is, sometimes he can make the ratio, uh, you know, 15 and make the PIFA just five mark question coming up there. But we have seen him over uh, a couple of times just splitting it between 10-10 uh, or between the two in 10-10 proportion in that particular case. So that is question three in the exam hall. Question four is my favorite area. I love it a lot because it's very easy. So we're going to have public-private partnership arrangements and then public procurement, okay? 10 marks each under public-private partnership arrangement. It is where, if you have follow of any public discourse, it is where government partners with a private sector institute or a covered entity that is you are you now you know what a covered entity is a covered entity partners with um a private sector entity to undertake a project and uh they get something at the end of the day in that regard there are a couple of things we're going to be looking at here there are principles that you need to understand number two there are objectives of the ppp that we need to understand objectives. Number three, there are limitations that we need to understand. Or if you want the demerits, the disadvantages of this whole PPP fiasco. Four is the types. I love it a lot because the types is something that the examiner is really excited about. And there are a couple of types that we need to understand. There is more, 
there is SE, there is, let me put it this way, Mo goes with SE, SC, sorry. Then we have what we call BTO, that is boats and BTO, that is build, operate, and transfer, build, transfer, and operate. Don't worry, we'll get into all these things later on. Then we have what we call boo. Okay, so like if you remember my boo, for those of you who use that for your girlfriends and boyfriends and your wives and husbands, if you remember boo, that is build, own, and operate. Build, own, and operate. And, you know, it's a type of PPP arrangement as well in that particular case. And we're going to be getting into these later on in the discussion as we move ahead. So the principles, the objectives, the types, the limitations, 10 marks, and all of them have been asked by the examiner one way or the other, be it's public procurement, that is also 10 marks coming in, is a central issue when it comes to public sector spending, because once the budget is approved, government buys through procurement. And so there is 10 mark question on the public procurement that we need to look out for as well in the exam hall. So that is question four, and it's on public private partnership arrangement and public procurement 10 marks each now we go to question five question five is going to be the issue relating to what i call no man's land okay no man's land what the heck do, do i mean by that anything else that the examiner couldn't structure because they are not part of question one they are not part of question two they are not part of question three they are not part of question four which is in the syllabus will come in the question five here so we can have issues such as the following one, the role of these guys, and you know them already, controller, accountant general, auditor general, minister of finance, public accounts committee, parliament, okay, uh, principal spending officer, principal account holder, all right? So that's one of the areas that the examiner can come in in question five. It's a normal land area. Whatever is in the syllabus, the examiner is going to be throwing it at you generally at the end of the day. So the role of these guys and uh, in public sector, we need to understand that very well. Number two, we can have budgeting and budgetary control coming in. That's the second issue there. Then remember I told you about revenue management and expenditure control here in, in question two, that the examiner can ask you a question on it, right? If you remember, I told you that that question specifically that the examiner can ask you about that could be brought in in question five, okay? So that is another area that the examiner can throw about that. Then there could be other issues as well. When I talk about other issues like users of financial statements, okay, and uh, some other issues, and some other issues. So this is the public sector accounting and finance syllabus, the scope of it, what you need to know about, and most importantly, what is going to be coming in the exam hall.